Ladies and gentlemen, this is Broke Rednecks Prepping. My name is Matt. We are coming to you from Spur, Texas. Tiny home capital of the world and home of the fighting bulldogs. Now, we've been getting a lot of questions lately about people who all of a sudden, because the coronavirus is happening, and they're pretty sure that shit has hit the fan, or is about to, want to know what type of gun they should buy. Well, the answer is, they should have bought it a while ago and trained with it and gotten good with it. However, I get that they're expensive and a lot of people don't have the time. And it's not something you think about until you absolutely think you're going to need one. And so, I don't want to belittle anybody. I get it. However, when people ask me, all right, this we're a little worried about the coronavirus thing. We're seeing stories that crime's going up in places like Houston or New Orleans. We're worried about our, our household, worried about our family. Police response times are going to have to slow down. We want to have something better for home defense. So what should I get? Problem with that is the question should not be, unfortunately, what type of gun should you get? <clears throat> because to be perfectly honest with you, the real question is what type of ammo can you get a hold of? If you go to an academy, Cabela's, Walmart, you're not gonna have an easy time finding pistol ammunition. Normally a video like this, I'd cover some handguns that would be really good for home defense. I can't do that. Um, in the last two weeks, we have looked everywhere for pistol ammo. We have some, but I figured I'd stock up a little more. And the problem with it is the only pistol ammunition I've been able to find, and it was an electrical store in a small town, was 38 Special. Your normal calibers, 9mm, 380, 40 cal, that sort of thing, are basically gone. So what I did is I, because, I mean, you can buy guns anywhere. I guarantee you there's a pawn shop, an academy, Cabela's. They have guns for you. But whatever gun you buy, you're going to have to have some ammunition for. So what I decided to do instead was we did a little research, kind of, and we're in West Texas, but we called around a couple states what type of ammunition could we get a hold of. And we came up with a few options for you. Now, all of these are going to be long guns, rifles, or shotguns, and that's okay. But, <clears throat> well, ammo's short, so we had to restrict it to what a person could actually get a hold of. Now, I have some guns lined up over here. You may be able to see them in the video. But I'm going to make just a few suggestions. One, if you see, a, say, a 38 caliber revolver or something like that, if you happen to be at a store like an Academy or a Cabela's or something along those lines that has a handgun you like, make sure they have the ammo. I'm not saying don't go buy a 9mm or something. They're great guns. It's just right now the ammunition's in short supply. So whatever you decide to get, make sure that that same place has bullets they can sell you, at least 50. As you want to have enough, you can take a few rounds out and practice with it at a range, make sure that you can hit the right side of a barn with it. And then <clears throat> you want to be able to actually take it home and still have some rounds in it. So make sure you can get some ammo. But the guns I chose are firearms that we have been able to find ammunition for. Now, the first thing, and this isn't in any particular order, you have to decide what you like and what works best for you and also what is sold where you are. But the first thing I'm going to recommend is a 22 caliber semi-automatic rifle. <clears throat> in our looking around, we didn't have really a hard time finding those. And I've got two examples of them here. One, this is a little Remington, uh, I believe it's a 722. It's the niece's rifle, got it for her for plinking rabbits, that sort of thing. Semi-automatic, holds seven rounds, good solid little gun, shoots 22 long rifle. We had absolutely no problem finding 22 long rifle. It's fairly short, it's not a big gun. This one came with a scope. If you're looking for home defense, you probably don't really need a scope. But you know what, it's handy anyway in case you want to rabbit hunt with it later, and you can probably eyeball somebody in the house. But it's a small bullet. You can buy a lot of 22 ammunition for about 20 bucks. We bought like 250 rounds the other day. Um, we've got thousands of rounds of it. But... Anyway, if you just had to go get a gun, this is not a bad example. This was, I believe I paid $129 for this, as an example. Your pawn shops are going to have a lot of it, so look at me. The other one is also twenty-two caliber. This is a Smith & Wesson uh, MP1522 22 caliber. This looks like the AR-15 of Myth & Legend everybody's afraid of. Uh, she put a flashlight on it that we bought at Tractor Supply for uh, $20, $20 or something like that. But it does come with standard peep sights. Now, if I had to pick between the two of these, I'd pick this one. This one was, uh, I believe, about $300. Uh, 
Uh, and the reason I would pick this one is because if you're staring down the barrel of it, you can't tell if this is a 223 or a 22. Most of these come in 223, 5.56, or 308 calibers, which are bigger rifle calibers. Uh, but we could not find any of that ammunition anywhere we looked. Maybe you can in your area, we could not. This is a cheaper version of the AR style, but the upside to it is it looks just like an AR. 22 bullets, not as lethal, but will hurt. Well, especially if aimed well, could kill somebody. But the thing is, this thing has the intimidation factor of an AR-15. So if you pick this up and point it at somebody, it, they are not going to know the difference until they get hit with the bullet. So consider that. We're at a point where the type of ideal guns you would want to get just aren't there. So you want to get the guns that have, that'll raise pulses a little bit. That's why I mentioned if you want to get a handgun, go ahead. Uh, I would recommend on this list something like a 38 revolver if you can find the ammunition for it or a 9mm. I just didn't put any handguns up here to show you guys because we have, like I say, I looked all over for a week, nearly two, and all we could find was a couple boxes of 38 Special. We really didn't have any luck finding pistol rounds. You may. But if you're going to have to go with a long gun because of ammo availability, this is a good one because you may not have to shoot anybody. You bust this out, somebody's trying to break into your house, they're going to assume it's the real deal and run off. And you can fire a couple rounds down if you have to shoot somebody. They're not going to enjoy getting hit with this. So give it a consideration. They're also a lot less expensive. And in times like this, people need to conserve money. So something to consider. Also, kind of a budget gun, but a very good one that I really like is this one. It's bigger. It's heavier. It's actually a Chinese SKS. The caliber it fires is 7.62 by 3.9, which is 30 caliber plus bullet. But the ammunition we were able to find fairly inexpensively. Normally you can order it online, the deliveries are slow. But when it came to this particular style rifle, it was available. Now if you have to get a rifle, I recommend you get a semi-automatic one. If you're looking for home defense, you don't want to be jacking with a bolt all the time. This is a semi-automatic rifle. Uh, it came with the scope. Uh, I actually borrowed it from my brother. He got it and came with the scope to be clear. But anyway, it's a semi-automatic gun. This is what the Russians, the Chinese, and militaries all over the world use as a style of this. It's on the Kalishnikov platform. Anyway, it's got a seven-round magazine. We purposely did not put an extended magazine in because I have not seen many of those at stores. If you want to, go ahead if you can find it. It's a heavy gun. It is not the most comfortable to wield, but it is accurate as hell. I mean, we took it out the range the other day. We were shooting water bottles at 50 yards with this thing with great consistency. It's also the kind of bullet if you shoot somebody inside of a house with it, it it's really only going to take one. This is a big bullet coming out. I'm in a close range. It's going to hurt a lot. They're not going to like it. It also kind of looks scary. There's just something about some of these guns. When you rack the chamber, it's loud. It's noisy. People know what it is. And they see you bust out with this thing. They're not going to want the business end of it. And again, in times like these, sometimes a smart thing to do is be able to intimidate somebody before you shoot them. It even comes with a bayonet, a lot of them do. Now, I don't really see a need to fix the bayonet and charge, but I guess if you really want to screw with some people, fix the bayonet. Anyway, one of these things, you can typically find them for about 500 bucks, more or less, depending on your area. So consider something like the Chinese SKS. Good, solid gun, can't go wrong with it. Again, most of the things I'm gonna tell you to get would be semi-automatic. Last thing I'm gonna show y'all here is Actually, what I would buy, if I just had to pick a gun to defend my house with and then go to the store and buy ammo today, the position many people are going to be in, I would go, this is a Remington 870, it is a pump shotgun. I would go with a pump shotgun. The reason for that, and this is a 20 gauge, I'd get either 12 or 20 gauge, that is the most common ammunition. And the reason for that is twofold. One, with a shotgun, you don't have to put a slug in it. If you don't know a lot about shotgun ammunitions, shotgun shells, the ammunition looks like this. It's 20 gauge. This is bird shot, I believe. Yes. Yes, it is bird shot. Anyway, we were, because it's turkey season here in Texas and several other places, we were able to find a lot of this ammo. Now, this is what you would use to shoot a dove at 30 yards away flying over a quail or a rabbit or something like that. However, if you shoot somebody 20 feet away, the distance of a house, this thing is not only lethal, it is brutal. It'll blow a big hole in them. And it's also got a big barrel <clears throat> compared to other rifles. When you stare down 
the muzzle on this thing, any gun's big and scary. This one's big and scary when it's not trying to be. So this thing is handy. It holds, I believe, five rounds. Um, usually get one in the $300 market. Ammunition's not terribly expensive. $7 will get you a box of 25 of pretty much any of your bird shots. However, if you miss, if you take a shot at somebody and you miss, you don't have to worry about the bullet going through three walls and hitting somebody down the street. Bear in mind, especially if you live in an apartment, you're sheltering in place, so are your neighbors. So we don't want to put any rounds into their apartment. Now, if you shoot your bedroom wall with this, it will tear up the sheetrock. You're going to have to buy a whole new piece of sheetrock. You're not painting over that. However, it's not going to kill people on the other side of it. It may hurt, but it's not going to kill them. But if somebody comes in your bedroom door or your front door and you pull the trigger on this, it's only going to take one shot. They're going back out the door. It also comes out in a pattern. Obviously, barrel's about yay big. But at 10 feet away, the spread's about that big. Which means you've got a little more margin for error. If you even just nick somebody with this, they're going to be down for the count for a minute. The other big upside to it is the intimidation factor. That. There is nobody on the face of the earth who doesn't know what that sound is. So if somebody's threatening to kick down your door, a bedroom door, or whatever else, and you're like, I've got a gun. This is Gypsy. She's the dog. And apparently wants to be on the internet. <clears throat> she also bird hunts, so when she hears shotguns, she wants to go fetch something. Anyway, when you hear that noise, and this is true for criminals, they know what that means. They don't know what round you have in your shotgun. They don't care. They don't want to find out. This is a great intimidation factor. It's also going to give you a little more accuracy at some range. You're only going to need one shot. If a person comes through your door, they're done. And then you've got four more rounds for, I guess, their buddies if they're dumb enough to come through the door. But at that point, if you rack the chamber on this, just jack it like I just did, and somebody still comes through the door, you're not going to have to kill anybody. They have committed suicide. It's probably a legal doctrine here in Texas. Anyway, consider one of these. You can definitely get one for under 400 bucks just about anywhere. There are other pup shotguns that are just as well. My nephew has a Mossberg he really likes. They're all functionally the same. But I would feel reasonably certain that without a whole lot of trying in your town, unless you're near one of those communist wealths where they've banned gun stores during this, but if you're in most of the country where you can still buy firearms, you're not going to have a hard time getting a pump shotgun. Pump shotguns also are not going to be an issue with most local gun laws, where an SKS or an AR Platform 22 might be. So... You'd be able to get this one fairly easy, fairly inexpensive, and you're, because of the hunting season aspect, you're going to be able to find bird shot for it pretty easy. Personally, I'd recommend number four shot. It's kind of what you'd use for something heavier like ducks or pheasants. But even so, if all you can get is bird shot, this is still lethal as hell. Now, these are just some guns that are inexpensive. You may get lucky and go to an academy and they've got a 10 millimeter whatever and you can find ammo for it because it's off the wall enough or something like that. If you want to go that route, by all means, go ahead. But based on my research right now, if you have just decided right now you're going to get in the market for a gun because you're worried about home defense, <clears throat> these are some ideas for you. But the big thing is get something that you think is going to have an intimidation factor. It's going to be a big thing. We want to avoid shooting people if we can. I mean, if you have to go to jail for shooting somebody that broke into your house, who knows when you're going to see the judge at this point. So... Being able to scare somebody away is a huge benefit. And any of these guns will do that trick. Especially those three that aren't the little gray one. Uh, now with the SKS and the AR platform, you may run into some issues in your local area if you live in California or New York or something. But in most states, you're going to be okay with it. Don't be afraid to buy pepper spray. You can, I know you can get it at Academy. I bought it there. I think Walmart sells it. Uh, you can order a taser online. Those are great things, too, and they're non-lethal. But at this point, with the rate burglaries and other crimes are going up, if, you're gonna, if you want a firearm, consider one of these. Just whatever you do, and I cannot say this enough, I know I've told you that I told you what I told you, and I'm telling you again, but make damn sure before you put your money into buying a gun that you can get ammunition for it. If you buy it at a pawn shop, tell them to hold on, go to Academy, and see if they have bullets. Do not buy a gun unless you know for a fact, meaning you have them in your hand, that you can get bullets for that gun. Because that's one thing I saw when I was in Odessa. You had all kinds of people buying every gun they could at the academy. Academy was out of ammunition. I mean all of it. So <clears throat> most of the guns people were buying, if they didn't have bullets at the house, they weren't going to have any. 
and there's no sense dropping five, six hundred dollars on a gun, or even a hundred and fifty if you go with a high point, and having something you're not going to be able to use. Anyway, <clears throat> that's my two cents on what I'd get for this coronavirus firearm. Um, like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think. I mean, some of you guys may have thought of something I hadn't, or you may have observations that are specific for your area. Anyway, appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.